Hello, good morning. Uh, glad to have you here. Welcome to day 11 of Advent of Code. Um, yesterday uh, we were doing day 10 and uh, luckily with some help from uh, one of my loyal viewers, Lars, I was able to get pretty far in the second part, but uh, the approach took too long to, get, to come up to with an answer and I had to uh, unfortunately cut the stream short uh, just around two hours uh, but I did manage to solve day 10 after the stream uh, by using memoization and I just quickly want to go over the solution and explain a little bit what's uh, going on hopefully I'll be able to explain that that is if I understand the solution good enough so um, I'm going to I've already added a breakpoint here I'm going to run the debugger to show you already what's some variables look like so given our input uh, which is uh, over here this was our input for yesterday it were it was 97 lines long and each input each number line standard for the voltage of an adapter so given that input uh, first thing we did is to sort uh, to kind of like parse the input sort the array and add the outlet itself which was uh, which had a zero voltage and then uh, we have um, put that into a variable so this was the variable that we're working with it's kind of like a list of sorted adapters going up to uh, the last one 97th with 159 voltage and uh, for the second part we created a graph with uh, each object property being the adapter and then the value uh, of each adapter would be the um, the possible children it could have so each adapter could connect to another adapter that is within three voltage range so here we have for each adapter we have a unique key and then its children its possible children are the value uh, we did this so we could traverse the graph um, very easily and and figure out our solution for how many different arrangements it's possible given this uh, set of adapters and um, later I found out that this is actually a dynamic programming problem and I'll link to it in the uh, uh, in the chat uh, hi Lars glad to have you here again uh, and uh, I really recommend this resource I was uh, reading over the problem and it made me better understand what uh, the algorithm was actually doing and uh, if you're curious, there's a bunch of different algorithms as well. In different day of Advent of Code, we did backtracking that came up. So I'll definitely keep an eye on, on this uh, resource because I'm sure we're gonna have to use more algorithm, algorithms as the, the day passes by. But uh, this was a, a dynamic problem that looked pretty much like Fibonacci um, uh, numbers in, in the sense that starting from the bottom, uh, our, our um, we traverse the, uh, we traverse the uh, graph in this function number of arrangements and we pass in the, uh, the first adapter. So we traverse the, uh, the uh, graph from the top, but the actual calculation starts when we reach the bottom and then we go up because when we reach the bottom, we just return one possible combination. And then as we go up the graph, um the number of possible combinations is uh, the one below it or, or at least the 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 sum of all its children so if you go to 158 it only has one child so it's uh equal to one and then 157 is the equal of arrangements for 158 plus 159 which is one plus one is two and then for 156 it's uh two plus one plus one so that's four and so on so uh, that's basically what's happening here. Um, with the uh, reduce, we basically say, hey, um, we start with zero and count the number of arrangements um, for, for that child, um, or at least for all the children, and then return for this particular, uh, for this particular adapter. And where I was wrong with my solution yesterday, is why it took so long, because we, uh, I wasn't making use of memoization. Uh, that is, I wasn't storing the intermediate computed values. And for example, 
what happens now is that as soon as we find um, the number of arrangements for each adapter, we store that in a kind of like an object uh, for later because we will have to reuse it uh, many different times as we go up. We'll like, for example, here if we, we're at 156, we need to know how many arrangements is possible for the three adapters that are higher than 156. And instead of computing the combinations and again and again and again for each of those adapters, I already saved the answer, so I can just uh, fetch the answer much quicker. Uh, and that saves a lot of computational resources that the program needs to use. And yesterday I was running the program for like 18 minutes and I only got to about 25 billion um, permutation. And the answer was along the lines of three and a half trillion. So it would have taken me more than an hour for the program to reach an answer. And with this uh, optimization, it was instant. So I can show you here. Um, the answer for yesterday's part was um, day 10 index was this big number over here, uh, which is kind of what, three, yeah, three trillion something. So um, yeah, that was my solution for yesterday. Um, uh, I wanted to quickly recap it. Um, it took me, uh, yeah, it took me a while to figure out, uh, but eventually we were on the right track in like creating the graph and traversing the graph. That was um, the good approach. We just had to introduce an, an, uh, a, perf a performance optimization here because to, to like speed up the program. And uh, yeah, and I thank Lars very much for that, for pointing me kind of like in the right direction. I also found this uh, useful resource, uh, which explains uh, the actual problem that we solved yesterday, but in a, with a different example, like climbing the staircase and how many different possibilities you can climb a staircase as the staircase grows bigger, bigger and as the number of steps you can take the first. So like you can take one or two steps or you can take one, two or three steps and how many different combinations you can climb that staircase. Um, it's, it's really interesting and like it goes down to explaining what a programmatic approach you can take to solve it and why what we did yesterday with the recursive is, um, is uh, has a big O of uh, I think N squared was it? Um, it was O, no it was O N not sure if it says here, but it was uh, it was very inefficient because it was exponential in time complexity, and you can reduce that by uh, with the dynamic uh, programming. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna link this to the chat as well. So uh, if you want to have a read, Lars says I'm happy that the graph was not a total waste of time. No, it wasn't. No, it was really useful. I had to use that. Uh, yeah, it was part of the solution for the second uh, part. All right, so without further ado, let's get to the third, uh, or at least the day 11. Yes, day 11, part one. Let's get to it. I'm excited. I hope we can do this today. I uh, reserved two hours for this stream. Uh, don't have anything after that, but I'll hope to, hopefully we're gonna be uh, coming up to a solution within two hours or two and a half or so. I'm just aiming for that uh, amount. All right, day 11, seating system. Uh, your plane lands with plenty of time to spare. So we were in airplane last yesterday, still in airplane, we're about to land now. Uh, I'm not sure if we're reaching our destination or we're just uh, doing another transfer. Your plane lands with a plenty of time to spare. The final leg of your journey is a ferry that goes directly to the tropical island. Oh yeah, we need to take a ferry. Where you can finally start your vacation. Um, as you reach the waiting area to board the ferry, you realize you're so early, nobody else has arrived yet. Not, not, not know what I do in life, I'm always late. <laughs> By modeling the process people used to choose or abandon their seat in a waiting area, you're pretty sure you can predict the best place to sit. You make a quick map of the seat layout, your puzzle input. So our puzzle input for today is gonna be the seat layout of the waiting room. Uh, the seat layout fits neatly in a grid. Each position is either floor, marked by a dot, an empty seat marked by an with an L or an occupied seat my, marked by a hashtag. For example, the initial seat layout might look like this. So we have a few seats and empty, just like empty, yeah, and no seats, and they're all empty. Uh, okay. Now you just need to model the people who will be arriving shortly. Fortunately, people are entirely predictable. That's true. <laughs> and always follow a simple set of rules. All decisions, well not entirely true, 
All decisions are based on the number of occupied seats adjacent to a given seat. One of the eight positions immediately up, down, left, right, or diagonal from the seat. Uh, so if we have this seat, then we have kind of like three seats up, three seats down, and two on each side. Or and diagonal, four diagonals, one up, one down, one left, one right. So that's eight seats, yeah. Uh, the following rules are applied to every seat simultaneously. If a seat is empty, L, and there are no occupied seats adjacent to it, the seat becomes occupied. All right. If a seat is occupied, hashtag, and four or more seats adjacent to it are also occupied, the seat becomes empty. Okay. Otherwise, the seat state does not change. Floor never changes. Seats don't move, and nobody sits on the floor. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. After one round of these rules, every seat in example layout becomes occupied. How does it? Because there's uh, the empty seats kind of like make it that no seat has four or more adjacent seats. Is that true? So this one has four. This one has. Well, this one has six. So I guess it becomes empty, but then it becomes. Ah, I don't understand. After one round of these rules, every seat in the example layout becomes occupied. After a second round, the seats with four... Oh, they're like... Oh, I see. Oh, I, they're applied at the same time. Yeah. So in the only in the second round, you kind of like take uh, into account the, uh, the new state of the map, of the layout. After the second round, the seats with four more occupied adjacent seats become empty. That's great. So this one's... This process continues for three more rounds. So another seats are filled, others are empty. So like people like sit down and stand up all the time, going back and forth and eventually kind of coming to an equilibrium. At this point, something interesting happens. The chaos uh, stabilizes and further applications of these rules cause no seats to change state. Exactly, kind of like which is an equilibrium. Once people start moving around, you count 37 occupied seats. Simulate your seating area by applying the seating rules repeatedly until no seats change state. How many seats end up occupied? Oh, this is interesting. So let's get our puzzle input. It's a big map. I'm gonna save this to uh, our uh, working directory. So this is some kind of game of life. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, although I've never, I'm not very familiar with programming Game of Life, so that's uh, still very new to me. But I, I do uh, know the concept. Um, so we have our input uh, in here, which is our map layout. That's good. Uh, we already have some setup code for the, uh, for reading the input. So let's see. Um, what's the best thing we can do is we can uh, kind of like map, go go over the entire map on each iteration, and then compute a new state of the map by either filling seats or emptying seats uh, according to these uh, two rules. So I guess I could just iterate um, Could I iterate over the array? Uh, it's going to be a two-dimensional array if we uh, parse this and if I just iterate to through the array one by one I kind of like uh, also keep track of the adjacent adjacent um, seats and I and then I have two rules if uh, if there's four or more adjacent seats occupied then if this seat is not empty make it empty and then if there's four or less or less than four then make that seat occupied and go on and so forth but 
the changes need to not be applied to the current map only to a future like the next um, next iteration of the map so we'll kind of have to make a copy and uh, and apply those changes to that new map and then we're when we're done with the first uh, state we can use the new copy and then we can discard the old one and then we'll create a new copy for the next state after that um, and so we'll go through the map uh, I just wonder if we're not gonna have the same problems yesterday it's quite a big map it's a uh, hundred lines long and perhaps a hundred wide as well so that's 10,000 seats iterations will have to go through on every state and if there's how many states well this small map has 37 states so this big one has probably also in the lines of thousands or million or tens of thousands so if I do that that's a bunch of iterations um, so I wonder if this brute force approach is gonna it's gonna give me an answer soon enough or if I'll just have to use an algorithm um, Conway's game of life uh, yeah I'm familiar with Conway's I never programmed it so I wonder if uh, peeking at the algorithms here um, we could use perhaps use something that's clever um, Conway game of life I'm just gonna quickly peek at the uh, at the Wikipedia page for Conway's Game of Life and uh, also not simply known as Life Seller Ultimate Device. Uh huh. Uh, zero player game. Okay. Uh, so what is it about? Uh, rules. Um, yeah. So the game has a bunch of rules. So like our puzzle, we have two rules, and then. kind of like expands yeah and then I think this game of life reach an equilibrium at some point where it goes on and on forever uh, and then on undecidability iteration algorithms so here what we're interested in in algorithms um, Mm -mm -mm. We need to talk about a for loop, counting the life numbers of each cell and decide to whether corresponding element of success array should be 0 or 1. For next iteration, the array swap rows, so the success array in the last iteration becomes the current array. Yeah, so that's our approach. That's like what I was talking about earlier about the solution that I came up with. But uh, let's see if uh, they have different algorithms. A variety of minor enhancements to this basic scheme are possible and there are many ways to save unnecessary computation. A cell that did not change at the last time step and none of whose neighbors changed is guaranteed not to change. That is true. Uh, so a program that keeps track of which areas are active can save time by not updating inactive zones. Okay, so that's one optimization we could include by kind of like keeping track of active or inactive zones. So we can discard the computation for that. But the computation is not hard. It's just reading the adjacent arrays. It's just tapping into those. That's not intensive. It's just a lot of things. So is, is, is there a different optimization? Um, finite memory. This leads to problems. Uh, if we get rid of the previous array state, that's not going to lead us to memory issues. Um, okay, so alternative pro uh, programs may abandon the notion of representing game of life with two-dimensional array and use a different data structure, such as a vector of coordinate pairs representing life cells. Uh, this allows the pattern to move about the field unhindered, and as long as the population does not exceed the size of the life coordinate array, the drawback is that counting live neighbors becomes a hash table lookup or search operation slowing down. Okay. Um, all right. 
Some game of life can go on forever, but repeating over multiple iterations. Anyhow, it was just for information. Yeah, thank you. Uh, definitely useful. I will um, I will go to the two-dimensional approach because reading the adjacent seats is not uh, is not computationally heavy. It's a, a one. It's a fixed one, um, and there is eight of the, eight of them, so it's kind of like oh eight. Um, and what what is taking up a lot of time is going through each seat and going through each seat. Reading the adjacent seats for each seat is okay, but going through each seat kind of gives us a uh, well, if it's like O of N and then as the map is bigger, then there's, I think, exponentially more possible different or steps we need to take until we reach an equilibrium. So it might be, this is not my strongest part, CS, but uh, computer science, but it might be O of N squared, I guess, if it's exponential or N to the two. Depends on how the states until yeah until we reach an equilibrium. Let's go with this approach, program it, and uh, see what we get. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna split our input here uh, by a new line, and then we're gonna get an array for each line, and then we also kind of split map that array as well um, line line split so now we have a, a multi-dimensional array and as we go through each one uh, we kind of need to Let's copy our, wait, we have our map in here. So let's call it, um, uh, what do they call this in the puzzle? Like seat layout, layout. Yeah, I think it's like a layout, map, seat layout, seat layout to the array. That's what we're gonna call it. And then we're gonna create a copy of it for the next iteration. Um, let seat layout, um, let's just call this uh, seat layout. Seat layout next state. And that's gonna be a copy of seat layout. And then we go through each seat. Uh, let's iterate to each. And that's gonna be what, that's gonna be our line. And then we go through each line. That's gonna be our seat. Our seat. And then we need the index for the line. And we need the index for the seat as well. Uh, index seat. So we can say, uh, we can be smarter about this. We can call this a row. Because seats have a row and a column. So let's uh, call them row. Row, and this is gonna be row index. And then this is gonna be the column of the seat. Well, this is the actual seat, isn't it? Yeah, it's seat. That's fine. And then uh, here, row for each. Okay, so then we have our seat, uh, row index and seat index, or like column index, better said, column index. 
and um, so first thing we need to do in here is to find the adjacent seats and then we can have our uh, our rules um, I think what we can do best um, so we're gonna start over here and then we're gonna have only three adjacent seats so okay, let's uh, what I would like to do is kind of like um, if I can slice the array get rid of everything that's too far and then do that for the next row as well and for the previous row uh, that would be neat uh, and then well, I guess it's going to be a bunch of slices. Maybe that's computationally intensive to get each seed every time. Um, yeah. Well, we can uh, we can perform we can optimize a bit later if we find the uh, um, if you find that our program is taking too long. So for now, um, if we are at uh, row one. Or at least row, yeah, row zero, uh, and seat zero. Then we need to grab uh, the so we have eight, uh, eight adjacent seats, and I figure I can get the top seats and bottom seats quicker, and then I just need to worry about the left and the right seat. So cost. Um, adjacent seats top and that's going to be um, the row a seat layout a row index minus one and then Wait, I can do it like this. Um, adjacent row above. And that's gonna be seat layout row index. So we only do this for as we traverse each row. And then we can do the same thing for adjacent seat uh, adjacent row below and that's going to be row index plus one and um, so we have that and then inside here we have uh, adjacent seat left gonna be like our row and then column index one to the left and then one to the right adjacent C right okay so we have our rows in our uh, seats and then I need to get, uh, let me get the adjacent seats at above and below by slicing the row. So I can say const adjacent, adjacent seats above is gonna be uh, does adjacent row above exist if it does then um, uh, it's adjacent row above sliced by the kind of like the previous column let me see so if it doesn't exist then we don't have any adjacent seats above we can kind of like um, assign an empty array 
uh, or something else um, and then if we slice uh, an array if we give it kind of like column index uh, let me see there's our input uh, slice let's look up the docs for it um, so we get a shallow copy that's fine and what I want to do is I want to slice the above array to ideally what I want to do is kind of like to column index minus one and column index plus one so I slice the above array so for example if what I'm trying to achieve is that if we are here say we are here and we have our top row the row above I want to get these three elements kind of like above our seat so I want to discard everything else um, so that's what slice is gonna do slice is gonna give us um, uh, the current element so slice 2 is 0 1 2 so from here so we need to kind of like say minus 1 and then up until including or excluding not included okay so 2 4 is gonna grab two elements so uh, what we need is plus one plus two this needs to be plus two so this is gonna give us three elements um, minus one current one and then plus one yeah and it's gonna uh, it's not including plus two so this one I want to have but there is an edge case where we are at uh, the beginning or the end where kind of like this there's no seat there's only two seats there's no seat in the upper left corner and which means that our column index is going to be zero so zero minus one is going to be minus one and what does slice do if you give it a negative number zero based index a negative index can be used indicating an offset from the end of the sequence so we don't want that um this needs to always be positive at least zero or positive uh, so i think we can use math uh can we use math to kind of like any number that's negative uh make it zero uh we can like seal floor no I mean, I think absolute is kind of like something what we can do, uh, but the minus one becomes um, becomes a one. So I was hoping to not have to use a conditional. What does round do? Does it get a second argument? No, it just rounds to uh, trunk. What does trunk do? Oh yeah, if it's a fractional. I don't think there's a function we can, we can use. I don't think so. Um, so we can say if column index is Maybe we can assign this to different variables. Uh, const um, upper or like lower bound above. And then we can say column index uh, is, because it's never gonna be, yeah, so it's always gonna be, if col column index is zero, zero then it's just um, column index otherwise it's gonna be column index minus one so how can we sh uh, write this shorter if there's no column index then column index otherwise column index minus one we can refactor this into this uh, although it's not that doesn't improve readability um, 
and then but then this can be refactored into um, into a uh, yeah I'm just gonna stick to this it's uh, let's not get too clever here and then we do the same thing for upper bound Uh, and actually this doesn't matter if it's above or below it's gonna be oh, it's gonna be the same for the upper and lower row so we can just say um, lower and upper bound and then column index is equal to like row length minus one uh, then we uh, reach the end and otherwise it's plus one okay so this is what I need I'm gonna slice the LA array by lower and the upper bounds oh and this was plus two Bounce. okay and then I can duplicate this and do the same for the adjacent row below Jason seats below, Jason throw below. Okay, this should get us what we want. So now that we have the adjacent seats, what I want to do is um, the rule is that you can go in and implement the rules. So the first rule says that if the seat is empty and there are no occupied seats adjacent to it, it becomes occupied. If the seat is occupied and four or more seats adjacent to it are also occupied otherwise the seat just stays the same so um, I kind of like need to count how many adjacent seats are occupied so what I can do is since I have an array here another array here and then uh, two adjacent seats um, Wait, this also needs to count for the fact that we might be on the edge here. So that's uh, something I just spotted. Um, adjacent seat left. If we are at zero, there's no adjacent seat left. So then this can be an empty string. And then the same thing for here. We could we could put this in uh, if else conditionals to kind of like not repeat the logic but I'm gonna leave it like this for now um, so what I want to do is I want to kind of like get a string um, of all the seats so then I can just count uh, the occupied seats so how many hashtags occurs in a string uh, 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 uh. so that's what I want to do because or what's what's going to be easier uh, having a string of having like an alum, uh, an array well this this going to be array elements yeah i think yeah i think we want to have an array uh, 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 uh. so this is going to be either an empty array or an array with individual seats as elements individual like yeah characters so that's good then we just need to concatenate this array to this array and then we're going to end up with either an empty string or the, the arrays and i can concatenate that to that as well so let's just say const adjacent seats I will put them all together. Um, we'll put them all together by saying doesn't really matter how I sort them, so I just say um, let me see what's like. Yeah, I can do adjacent seats above. I'll need to spread this array above, and then we go uh, adjacent seat left. 
will kind of like go uh, from top to bottom so that it makes sense uh, adjacent seat right and then we spread adjacent seats uh, below uh, adjacent seats below okay above left right below okay that's what we need so now we can say if current seat if seat is equal to empty and um, adjacent seats I think I need to to kind of like count yeah let's do that as well const so we have our stuff in here let's make adjacent seats uh, adjacent occupied number of what am I looking for here number of seats adjacent seats occupied so we can name this number of occupied adjacent seats verbose variable but uh, it's clear what it does um, and we can say adjacent seats filter seat seat uh, equals hashtag and then we can do the length of the array so now we have number of occupied seats and we can use that here if number of occupied seats is less than four then we need to was it less than four seat, seat and there are no occupied seats oh wait no occupied seats if number of occupied adjacent seats is equal to zero then uh, we do that and otherwise else if if the current seat is occupied so if seat equals to hashtag there and uh, four or more uh, seats adjacent to it uh, then it becomes empty so then we need to change the state of this seat as well so number of occupied seats is um, equal than or uh, bigger than or equal than four and four then we would need to do something as well otherwise um, we do nothing, meaning we don't change the state of the new array, so we can do this like this. Okay, so here's our uh, seat layout next state, and we need to modify that one. So we need to say seat layout next state row index, column index, which is where our current seat is. The seat is at row index and column index. Uh, then we change that into an occupied seat and otherwise this needs to be an empty seat so that's kind of like how we're going through each row and it and column and in, in each seat to modify the the new state of our map and as soon as we reach, uh, we go through all the rows and then we go to all the, uh, yeah, we go through all seats on each row and then we go through all the rows and then we reach the end of the map and then we made our new seat layout. So then we have one state. Uh, so we need to like wrap this in another loop that says, while state, the previous state did not uh, while previous state is different than from current state, we need to continue because we haven't reached an equilibrium. So we need to go on and on until, until we make no permutations. Uh, what we can also do, gonna be a bit, little bit more efficient, if we have a variable that just tracks, a boolean that tracks, did we make any changes in this round or not? So, um, did layout change it's gonna be our boolean we set it to false um, and let's set it to false in here as we begin 
So that layout change go false. So that's kind of like what we need to do here. And then as soon as we make a change, either in here or in here, we say, we kind of like mark this Boolean as true. And then we have, we have like our flag that says, hey, in this round, we did change uh, a seed layout. Therefore, uh, like we did not reach equilibrium. So we can do that in here. So we can do a while, did layout. Um, well, uh, well, I can guess, I guess I can set it to false here. So while well, did layout change, that's true. Oh, this needs to be true, so. Uh, so while the lay layout change, I'll continue and go on with whatever is in here. So let's move this to the top. And then um, we need to make sure that we're using the next state on the previous iterations. Uh, so let me see what I need to do here. We have our seat layout and I'd preferably, uh, I think we're gonna have to reuse that in the second part as well. So I'm gonna move this to the top and I wanna kind of like grab a copy of it. And I wanna say current seat layout. And I want to actually rename this to next seat layout. Yeah, that's uh, better, which is just a copy. Uh, this is going to be a copy as well. We'll see layout. So here we're working with current seed layout and it kind of goes through it. Uh, wait, we're, yeah, let's use, uh, let's use current seed layout everywhere. Let me make sure we're not reusing this, only here. IntelliSense is so smart, if I can like um, select a, a variable, it's gonna highlight where it's being used and also in the diff, in the diff here. So I can see, okay, we're not using anywhere else, so that's good. Uh, and then this one, we use it over here, which is fine. And then next seat layout. Oh yeah, so we need to use next seat layout in here. Uh, um, that's good. And then kind of like at the end of the loop, we need to swap the layout. So we can say current seat layout. Current seat layout becomes, or can I do that at the beginning of the, uh, Current seat layout becomes next seat layout and next seat layout becomes a copy of current seat layout. That's kind of like what I'm trying to do. So therefore uh, I can, I need to keep track of these variables outside of the while loop. Yeah, this is this is fine. Let's see, first iteration, current seat layout is gonna be next seat layout, but then, yeah, we kinda like, no, we need to do this at the end. Cause then we're not going ahead. Cause we have our current seat layout here or, wait, I have a better idea. I have a better idea. Uh, this empty. Current seat layout, does it exist? Then it's gonna be No, 
Um, I'm just making myself more complicated by uh, doing this. I'm just gonna put this at the bottom. Okay, so this makes a bit more sense. We start with um, fresh copies of of current and exceed from the original, and then we at the end after we're done, uh, we're swapping the current seed with the next one, which we changed, and then we make a fresh copy for the next one to be used uh, again based on the current one. Uh, okay. There we are. I think we're done with our solution. Uh, wait, <laughs> not yet. We need to figure out uh, what's the, what was the question for this one. How many seats end up occupied? So after we reach an equilibrium, so this is going to be false and then we go out of the loop and then we have, we need to figure out how many seats are uh, occupied in the end state. So what we can do is we have our current seat layout, which is going to be a two-dimensional array. We can say occupied seats is going to be this one. We're going to reduce it, uh, occupied seats, and it's going to be uh, the row. this and then um, so we start with occupied seats it's gonna be zero and then for each row we kind of like want to uh, say hey uh, take the row um, filter out occupied seats is equal to hashtag and then do the length so we have the number of occupied seats per row and as we go through each row we add them to the accumulator which is zero and then after the first iteration it's going to be however many occupied seats are on the first row and then the second row and so on so and then we have the number of occupied seats and we can uh, we can log the answer for part one in here and hopefully this solution is not going to take up a lot of time because then we'll have to find out uh, come up with an optimization let's run it the first try for today first uh, part of the puzzle I'm gonna set my debugger here just to make sure okay no day 11 index.js um, Unlucky on the first run, we get a zero, which is obviously incorrect. We'll have to, um, let's go backwards. Let's put a debugger in here and see what the final state looks like. So current state layout is a long array of, wait. Okay, so there's no occupy seats at all. So that's wrong. Uh, so somewhere in changing the seat layout is not working as expected. Next seat layout, row index, it's good, that's the row index, that's the column index. So we tap into that and then we say it's equal to hashtag. So maybe we never get here. Let's put a conditional in here and just of a breakpoint and then see if we get into that conditional at all. No, we don't. So probably the conditional is wrong. Number of occupied adjacent seats equals zero. So is this correct? Adjacent seats filter seat seat equals hashtag dot length. So if the seat is empty and if there is no occupied seats, Is that the rule? If seat is empty and there are no occupied seats adjacent, the seat becomes occupied. The rule is correct. Uh, let me add a breakpoint here and see what we're dealing with on the first run. So we have uh, number of occupied seats, zero. 
that's good because on our first map we don't have any quiet seats um, adjacent seats oh but adjacent seats doesn't look right what's adjacent seat left that's undefined that's correct but adjacent seats right should be uh, should be a different seat there should be actually an L for the first round yeah because we uh, 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 what seat oh wait so maybe something so here's our layout it's not a two-dimensional array what is it oh it is yeah so then each row is uh, that and then we actually need to split the row as well yeah okay so let's do that uh, row split mm, actually we can can we make turn this into a three-dimensional array that would be neat that would be neat uh, so it goes through each line and splits yeah, no, splits the input by new line, okay, and then it goes through each line, splits the input by that, and then what I want to do is map through each row, map each row, and then we have the row in here, and then for each row, wait, something, oh, I see what's going wrong. This is not a new line, this is, should be just this. Okay, uh, let's run it again. All right, that looks right. Uh, adjacent seats, yep. That's exactly what we need. Adjacent seats, uh, 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 adjacent seats above is undefined. And then, oh, wait a second. Adjacent seat left, adjacent seat right is empty. Adjacent seat left is undefined. Because column index is zero. If column index is zero, then this should be swapped around. Yep, if column index is zero, then uh, we, there's no seat on the left side and otherwise grab the seat on the left side so that's good if we uh, column index is at the end if the seat is at the end of the row then uh, we need to swap these as well then there's no row uh, there's no seat on the left adjacent seat on the left otherwise i grab the seat on the on the right i mean oh I'm confused right left on the right okay uh, let's run again so adjacent seat left is empty and right is uh, okay. We that's correct. Above uh, adjacent seat above. There's no row above because we're on the first row, and therefore the row below. That's correct. Okay, this looks good so far. I'm gonna run the program again. We do get a result. Uh, we have 2,296. Let's give it a try. One hour in. First part. Uh, not right. Your answer is too low. Curiously, it's the right answer. I got that yesterday as well. I, uh, I submitted an answer and it told me the answer is the right answer for someone else, but not for me. So then it's like saying, are you, you might be logged into a wrong, uh, wrong account, but I'm not. Uh, I'm just unlucky. Okay, so our answer is too low. We need a higher answer. So let's uh, go through the debugger again. Let's put it here and see what our final state looks like. Our breakpoint is in there. Final state is this. This kind of like a final seat layout. Does it? Is it um, correct? Wait. Oh, I see. I'm not accounting for dots. Dots are. Well, I'm not doing anything with dots. So. I'm only changing seats if it's empty or occupied. I'm not doing anything to the dots, so no, that shouldn't be the problem. 
Mm, do we have... Why isn't there... I want to know what uh, seat layout is. Oh, here. Do I have it there? But it should be... Oh, here. There it is. Okay, good. So we have seat layout. And then we have our... Our, so we have our beginning layout and our final layout and I see there's a dot in here there's another dot here let's go to our beginning layout dot here I think the dots yeah the dots are left unchanged so the dots are fine um, there's a flaw in our logic here somewhere um, what I'm going to do, let's go through a couple of iterations and see and see where uh, where we end up in. Okay, so run a debug. So for the first seed, I think this equals true. That's correct. Change the seed layout to occupied. Go to the next seed. Next seed. Uh, it's not true because your seat on the left is and oh that's not correct uh, that's not correct because so for some reason we are modifying yeah we're modifying the array we're actually working on uh, which we don't need to do we need to modify only the oh wait is it not this is a shallow copy it's not deep copy Mm, I need to do a deep copy. Uh, does JavaScript does is there a native method for copying an array deep? Deep copy or something? No. I know there's a I know I can I could uh, import lodash and use uh, use that. Uh, But so far I haven't used an external uh, library and I've done everything with native methods and I would like to stick to that. Let's see if I can copy in this array. So what is what's going on is that uh, the rows are copied but the elements inside the rows are not. Those are references, those are not copies. So if I do seat layout for each um, no, I need to make copies of those as well. Maybe map. I'm not sure. Map row return row. Kind of like same here. Is this is this gonna be a a cop the copy that we need? Let's, uh, let's give it another spin. First iteration. Good. Second. Looks like it. Yeah. Zero. Awesome. That did it. That did the trick. Uh, we copied the uh, nested array as well. Let's run the program again. We get a different number. This is higher. So it might just be the correct number. No, too high this time. Okay, back to debugging. Uh, 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 um. So first iteration, yeah, that's okay. Second one, make it empty as well. Well, like on the first iteration, all the empty seats are going to be occupied because there's no occupied seats in the beginning to, to start with. So all the seats are going to be occupied. And then let's see, next seat layout. It's kind of like marking, see, as you can see, it's marking. First two seats are marked occupied, and then the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one. As you can see here, yeah, it's marking all the seats occupied. So it's like going all through those, all of them as well. Uh, let's remove these breakpoints and add another breakpoint for the next iteration here. Then we're there. Let's add these breakpoints again. And then, 
So now we are on the second iteration of the map layout. We have all our seats occupied, which should be. Wait, let me just. Yeah. I can just get rid of the bugger. Okay. Uh, so our current seat layout is. It's all occupied seats. And then. What is going to be here? Seat. Seat is equal to occupied. True number occupied adjacent seats is equal. To uh, is three, so it's not bigger than equal to four. If a seat is occupied and four or more, so equal than, uh, greater or equal than, so that's good, are also occupied. The seat becomes empty. If not, the seat does not change. So in this case, it does not change. We don't do anything with it. Mm, that's good. That's um, good. Wait, while I'm copying this in here, I need to make sure I also do a deep copy. Yep. Um, definitely. So current seat layout is, yeah. Otherwise I'm just, uh, yeah. So we do a deep copy in here too. Okay, maybe that was our bug. That was our bug. Let's run it again. Okay, so we get a, a lower number than our first try and I think what was um, on the second try the answer was too high and on the first try the answer was too low so our correct answer is anywhere between these two and this one is not that so um, let me think Current seat layout, we assign it to the next one, which is all right. And then we copy, we make a new copy. I'm pretty sure this is a deep copy. And then in the copy, we modify the new Hmm. If you have any idea, chat, let me know. Maybe it's a very easy bug that uh, I haven't spotted. Or maybe there's just a flaw in, uh, in my thinking. It's always a flaw in the thinking. Humans are not machines. Am I counting right? Let, let me make sure I'm counting the seats right here. Occupied seats plus row filter seat. I'm using the current uh, seat layout. What if I use functional programming instead of for each? If I use a map? Would that work for next layout? Instead of modifying that, I just return return hashtag or return L. And then this needs to be a map as well. And return. Yeah. And then we need to yeah, move this to the top. I'm gonna still have a flag. So then we can get rid of this one and we can say, okay, current seat is going to be the next seat. Okay. Uh, let's see if, uh, 
output. Yeah. Oh, it might have hit uh, infinite loop. Yeah, it might have hit an infinite loop. Um, next seat layout. We don't use it up here. Oh, wait, I know what's going on. Yeah, like this. Let's run again. Nope. Or maybe that's what. Okay, wait. Next seat layout is current seat layout. But. as well and then seat is that's right we turn the row and then next seat layout is that so then in the next iteration current seat layout is the go to next seat layout And then, oh yeah, wait, we need to copy. Well, it is, it is copies, kind of like next seat layout, map copies, returns a copy, I'm pretty sure. A new array, yeah. Uh, and then the parameters is current value index. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, current seat layout. Something's uh, something's wrong. Let's run our debugger. Okay, so we have the current seat layout is all empty seats. All right. Let's go to the next iteration. What's our current seat layout? So empty. Oh, undefined. Oh, I see. I see because I map every each item. Else, um, else if, or otherwise, return seat. There we go. Okay, so we get the same answers before we. Okay, but at least now it's clear that we use we're mapping. Uh, so that's less imperative code here. To trip on, um, current seat, next seat layout. We can also move this to the top. Okay. Um, okay, so we're back to where we left off. Let's uh, run a couple of iterations of these maps and see. So current seat is all full seats. And what is it now? It's all empty. It's a bunch of empty seats. Well, that makes sense, yeah. And then there's gonna be a bunch of filled seats, empty, and so on until it kind of like now it's gonna be more empty, but a little less than previous time. So in each iteration, it's less and less empty seats on a second run. Until we reach an equilibrium. I'm wondering if uh, if I'm not modifying the array a second time. No, not really. Did layout change? True. We go in there. If we change any of the seats, then we say that. Otherwise, um, it's going to stay false. Otherwise, it's going to stay false. So then we reach the end of the loop and then we I think we're doing the counting right we'll we go through to the layout and then for each row filter so each row is um, I mean you're on the debugger each row is oh I want to remove this breakpoint each row is yeah each 
with uh, each seat as the element. So we filter, say, grab the occupied seats, and then the length of that row is the number of occupied seats, and then add it to the total. So on the first row, we have 46 occupied seats. On the second row, we have 52, 96, and so on. Uh, that looks good. Let me just, well, I'm not gonna count them by hand, but kind of like makes sense. I just wonder why the equilibrium, we, so we did find an equilibrium, it's just not the right one. Um, and I wonder where the bug is. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Uh, let, let's try with this, the small input. Maybe it's easier to debug if you have a smaller input. Should have done this actually in the first place. Input to, gonna place our input in here. Let's use input to here. Okay, so what answer do we get? 39. And the correct answer is 37. So that's not correct. So at least we can use this input to debug. So this is our final state. Um, this is what our final state looks like. Um, let's compare. Let's compare. Um, So just the first state, everything's occupied. Uh, after the first run, everything's occupied, which is correct. Looks correct to me. We left the dots uh, in their place. And In their place yeah uh, second row last one two dots second row third row last two dots yeah the dots are in their place and um, we just marked everything as okay let's go to the next round where we have four uh, occupied and three empty four occupied and three empty yeah and it's the correct ones uh, let's go to a different row and do a check How about this one here this one so it's one two three four fifth row and then the first one is occupied and the other ones are empty fifth row first one is occupied other ones are empty well not this one. Oh, I key I see so maybe that's where uh, that's what we're doing wrong so somewhere the lower bound, uh, adjacent row above and adjacent row below, adjacent seat left and adjacent seat right. So the row length minus one is gonna be equal to column index. So if you reach, this says if we reach the last seat in a row, is that correct? You have the length of an array, which is like say, with 96 elements, I think. Or no, in this case, it's 10. So it's 10, but then the index is going to be 9 because we start with 0. So 10 minus 1 is 9. So that's true, equals to uh, 9. Then we say an empty seat, adjacent seat, right? Yeah, that's correct. Otherwise, it's going to be plus 1. That's good. Um, lower bound and upper bound are these correct uh, lower bound is so this is regarding the seats the rows above and below uh, if column index is equal to zero then column index uh, then the lower bound is column index that's correct because we're going to use that in the slice okay and otherwise it's minus one okay that's good and here the same thing if you reach the last row uh, seat in the row then it's uh wait upper bound is plus one. Oh, i see that's uh that's our bug let's run it again yeah that was our bug because slice it's up to but excluding the last one so i had to do a plus one here um, all right, let's try our uh, 
fix on the original input and uh, yeah we, I have a good feeling about this 2483 is between the two attempts we tried earlier and that's what we're looking for we're looking for a number that was higher than the first attempt but lower than the second the right answer we did it one hour and ten minutes in because I used the 10 first 10 minutes to explain the previous day solution but we did it first part solved in one hour and ten minutes we got 21 stars pretty happy let's go to part two where's part two is this part two? Oh, that's a long explanation long explanations uh, scare me a little bit okay let me just make this smaller here and uh, we'll keep our input example input okay part two Let's get to reading. Uh, as soon as people start to arrive, you realize your mistake. People don't just care about adjacent seats. They care about the first seat they can see in each of those eight directions. So our rules are changing this time around a bit. Now, instead of considering just the eight immediately adjacent seats, consider the first seat in each of those eight directions. For example, the empty seat below would see eight occupied seats. Oh, I don't. So instead of considering just the eight immediately, immediately adjacent seats, consider the first seat in each of those eight directions. Oh, I see. Um, for example, the empty seat below would see eight occupied seats. First seat in the left direction is this one. First seat in the right direction is this one because these are empty. Okay, I get it. I get it. The leftmost empty seat below would only see one empty seat but cannot see any of the occupied ones true yeah because uh, it cannot look farther than this seat even though it's empty so physically you'd be able to see uh, that but in our puzzle a person cannot look beyond a seat, regardless if it's empty or not. Uh, it, can, uh, it cannot look beyond that seat. So this seat only sees one empty seat on the right hand side. The empty seat below would see no occupied seats. Because going to the left, there's no seats. Going to the right, there's no seats. Going up, there's no seats. Going down and going diagonal, there's no seats either. Okay, so yeah, this makes our uh, the rules a little bit trickier because this was quite a yeah quite a like simple approach grabbing those seats, but now we just have to kind of have a loop for each of those seats and go in each direction and grab the seat. So that's making our solution uh, much more using this approach much more computationally heavy because not only do we have three loops three nested loops for the outer innermost loop we add eight more loops no not eight because how many directions do we have four five eight eight directions um eight more nested loops to find each seat that we need to take into account um, and that's adding a lot of uh, computational time. We could try and optimize that by, by, no, we can't. Well, because each seat is going to be different. So I'm sure I'm not sure if this approach we can go on with it or that we need to think of something else. Let's uh, finish reading the second part. Also, people seem to be uh, more tolerant than you expected. It now takes five or more visible occupied seats for an occupied seat to become empty. Okay, so this change is easy, straightforward. Uh, instead of four, it's five. Rather than four or more. Uh, the other rules still apply. Empty seats that see no occupied seats become occupied and seats matching no rule don't change. And floor never changes. Okay. Given the same starting layout as above, these new rules cause the seating area to shift around as follows. So given our example input here, the changes are this 
and then again at this point only people stop shifting around and the seating area reaches equilibrium once this occurs you count 26 occupied seats so we're gonna have a different equilibrium because the rules are different and we need to our answer is gonna be uh, given the new visibility method and the rule change for occupied seats becoming empty once equilibrium is reached how many seats end up occupied so we need to adjust our rules um, and uh, figure out how many seats are occupied in that case all right um, mm -mm. I wonder if uh, if I should just try and have this kind of like brute force or naive approach and and uh, figure out the seats for each as we go or that uh, it's gonna take too much time well, this, this solution takes a bit of time, but it's not longer than a half second. Um, uh, could give it a try and see if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll have to come up with something else eventually. Um, an algorithm then, perhaps, yeah. That's kind of like the only thing I can think of right now. Go through each seat, and then for each seat, kind of like have eight different loops. That uh, well, not if the above row is missing, but in the worst case, it's gonna have eight different directions to go in, uh, into, and then we need to find the uh, first seat in each of those directions. It's gonna go like this. It's gonna spread out like a web. It's gonna go diagonal in four directions and left, right, up, down. Um, and then we eventually grab those seats and then we can go on with the logic. I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna uh, 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 I'm gonna wrap the answer from first part in an uh, immediately invoking function so that we don't get into scope collision. In our with our second part because we're gonna be reusing some variables and I don't want to give them different names uh, let me see that I add the brackets right nope yeah that's correct code still runs yep okay then uh, Right, there we go. Uh, second part, uh, we're gonna have to reuse some of the things from the first part, if not most of it. So let me just copy and paste this. And um, everything is fine uh, up until this point where we uh, get the adjacent seat left, right, and the seats above is not going to be the same logic anymore because we're not going to slice the array. The seats above are going to be spread out over different rows. Um, so lower bound, upper bound, we won't need, be needing these either. Uh, what I need to get is... Um, well, I still need adjacent seats, so I'm going to be adding them in here. And yeah, this is going to be all the same. The rule changed from 4 to 5. So um, everything's good. Yeah, then we just need to change this. So let's go from... The logic is going to go from top left. And we're going to go down. So let's say... Let's make the variables for all those seats. Adjacent seat. Top left and then this is gonna be top and then this is gonna be top right and then we go left right and then we can kind of say uh, bottom left wait I can there we go so we have 
top left, top, top right, left, right, bottom left, bottom, bottom right. Maybe name this center. That's kind of easier. Top center, bottom center. Okay. So the rules for the left seat and right seat, no, they don't apply either. I'll need a loop for those as well. But uh, it's the same function I could reuse, I think. So let me instantiate this in the outer scope here. Get adjacent seat. And because um, I'm thinking ahead, uh, there's going to be some repeating logic for each of these, and I can put that into a function. Uh, I'm just wondering what that repeating logic is going to look like. So, for the top left, you kind of go one row up, one column left, one row up, one column left. Mm, 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 mm. Let me just write the code. I'm gonna write the code for each seat and I'm gonna see a pattern emerge where there's um, repetition and then I'm gonna extract it into that function. So to get the adjacent seat top left, um, we need to think because I can do a while loop in here while adjacent row above equals to true then do whatever and then you say adjacent row above is gonna be I'm gonna keep gonna have to keep track of the index as well So we need a column and then we need a we need like a coordinate. So we need a row number, a row index and a column index. And then if that seat exists, so if that column index and row index exists in our map, then we can grab the seat and so I guess this is what our function can do. Uh, it can, it's gonna take a column index and a row index. And uh, it's gonna take our current seat layout as well. Yeah, let's pass the Let's pass the uh, array as an argument. And then if so, if current seat layout, if the row exists, and column exists in that row well I don't have to say that row because the column is one change um, but it needs to be yeah it needs to be at that yeah and then so if that exists then um, we have our seed so that's gonna be adjacent seed I guess I could just do that. Const adjacent seat. Be that and that. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be undefined. So if adjacent seat.
exists and adjacent seat is not um, like an empty so it's a seat so maybe I should call this adjacent um, object adjacent um, adjacent position just call it JSON position rename position because we don't know if we said seeds or not JSON position uh, if a JSON position exists and it's not an empty uh, space then it, we know it's a seed and then we can return the JSON seed uh, or yeah the position but I could also just return could also just return if it's empty uh, let, let me see I'm gonna figure out where I put the logic inside of this function uh, whether the seed is empty or not so now we just get the adjacent seed uh, we have that in here um, so what I need to do for each direction I need to figure out the new row index and column index think <sighs> so if adjacent seats position uh, dot otherwise return uh, 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 let me think so as we go top left we need to subtract the row index and column index by one on each iteration. Mm. On each iteration. So let's get rid of this. Um, and then we need to stop when we reached out of bounds. So either the row index does not exist or the column index does not exist in that current map so well we know that if it's zero so yeah we can say well row index um, is bigger than zero uh, let's do a do while instead then in here we can say let um, current row index so we're gonna have two variables that keep track of our index for the row and Our column current column index and then uh, 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 let me see I'm just gonna use a while instead I think that's better that's confusing since we're using a while in the outer loop as well So uh, we can say we can do something in here that says um, actually we can copy this and then there we go. We can 
do a minus one. Our first iteration, we're gonna go one row up, one column left, and then while current row index um, is bigger than zero, yeah, it's bigger than zero, and current column index is also bigger than zero, means we uh, we did not reach the end of the uh, out of bounds of the 40 map going in the top left direction. So that's good. Then we can change these to be on minus minus. Okay, so now in here we're gonna have our code that uh, calls this function. And you can say get adjacent seat, const seat. Uh, well, we can adjacent seat top left, get adjacent seat. And it's gonna take in our current seat layout, current seat layout. Um, the row index and column index okay but however we also want to stop when we um, when we find the seat um, when we find the seat So this shouldn't return true. Um, while we, while we're still within the bounds of the map, and we don't have an adjacent seat, then continue. So this one should only return true if um, if it finds a seat regardless if it's empty or not. So if it's uh, if it, there's an adjacent position, well, for one, we know that there is gonna be an adjacent position because that's what we are checking for here. So we don't need to do this. We're pretty safe here. We know that it's gonna be in bounds. Um, adjacent position. And if adjacent position is, so I'm just gonna return here, return adjacent position is equal to dot, then um, there's no seat there, so we need to return false. And otherwise return adjacent position. Yep, this is, uh, this is what we're looking for. Yeah, this, this function is not doing that much. But we're gonna reuse it. Um, okay, so we get our top left seat here. If it's correct. And then let's do the same thing for the seven other seats. I could kinda like just copy this. And say um, mm -hmm. and then we're done with this but then so for the top center seat we need to go upwards so we are not uh, doing anything with the column Just a row. Um, so the column we can discard. And in here as well. Just a row. Because um, we're going up in rows and uh, we 
we're gonna have a variable clash here between these I'll need to rename this current row index well this is gonna like change 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 uh, and then in here I guess I could just reuse the variable. I know that's bad, but it's fine for now. Uh, I instantiated here. I use it in this loop, but I'm gonna reuse it in this loop because I kind of like reset the value here to be row index minus one. So then I can reuse it in here. And um, this is kind of like the logic for the top center, I guess. We go above until we can and then just get adjacent seat. Okay, so let's um, do the same for top right. Top right, okay. And then the top right we go in a different way so we need to subtract the row index but we add to the column and then we are afraid of reaching outer bounds on the upside for the column so current column index is while well, current column index is smaller than the uh, the what the row length minus one i think that's it otherwise we reach outer bounds on the right hand side current column index yeah all right and then we have a uh, traversal to the left traversal to the left just gonna look more like this Jason seat left Uh, we're gonna not do anything with the row but the column instead and it's gonna be minus there now I need to get rid of uh, these no not all of them no not all of them just these two Alright, um, so adjacent seat left is going to start a column to the left and then we subtract the column by one each time. Okay, uh, wait a second, I spotted a bug, I should pass it current row index and current column index, current row index. And column index is not going to change, so that's good. Current row index, current column, okay. Current column, row index is not going to change. Okay, so we got our left seat in here. Uh, let's get our right seat, which is going to be kind of like similar, but instead of subtracting the row, the column, we're adding to the column. So let's call this adjacent seat, right? This is such a hacky code. It's a horrible code. I just hope it works and I get the answer for today. <laughs> uh, I could I could like eventually find a pattern in here because these while loops have something in common. They're like, as long as there's no seat left, do something. But then the depending on which direction you go, there's a different logic for uh, for getting the the column and the row index. So you could subtract this into a function function as well, um, but I'm just gonna do it like this for now. Um, and then figure with that, that out later if I want to. 
uh, see so we're going bottom left in the direction let's grab mm, let's grab this one okay so bottom left uh, bottom left goes uh, row plus one column minus one and therefore so the row we add to the row and then we subtract the column okay and that looks good okay so then we're done with that as well adjacent seat bottom center so we're going to the bottom center which is going to be similar to top center it's the, but just the other way around so instead of subtracting the row we add the row yep and let's rename this variable here good and then bottom right is going to be similar to bottom left except uh, We need to swap uh, these two. So current row is going to be row index plus one. That's good. The column, the column needs to be plus one instead of minus one. All right. So that's it. Um, these should give us all the rows, all the eight rows uh, seats. I mean adjacent seats, all the eight adjacent seats that we're looking for. And uh, then what we can do. It's kind of like so we have eight variables and we need to get we need to find out how many of them are occupied uh, we have eight strings and we need to find out how many of them are hashtags what's the easiest way to do that I could just add them all into an um, into an yeah into an array Can just add them all to an array and then I can reuse the code that's here underneath this line. I can filter and then count the length of the array. That's what. Uh, oh, it needs to be close bracket. Okay, so let's. Uh, we have. We have different names now. Adjacent C top left. Where's our here? Top left. Uh, 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 uh. This is gonna be top center. This is gonna be top right. And um, adjacent seat left and right, so that's good. And then we have bottom left. And this is going to be bottom center and bottom right. Okay, that looks good. Uh, let's give it a spin. See what we get for uh, the second part. Uh, let's use our example input, our smaller input, because if something goes wrong, we're going to use that anyway to debug. So. We get 37 again. Oh wait, the second part is not being executed. Oh, because I did not execute the IP. Yep. We get an error. Can I read property minus 10 of undefined? Interesting. What does it get to minus 10? Uh, column 56. Oh, so here in our helper function. Uh, first of all, somehow. Yeah, somehow we are not. Uh... Oh, I see. I see. I forgot to change the conditionals here. So we're going top left here. This, this one's good. We're going to the top center. Uh, this one is good. We're going to the top right. This one is good. Uh, and then we go to the left. So that's that should be column. And this one should be column, but then smaller than 
the length minus one then we went to the right okay and now we're going bottom left which means uh, the row shouldn't while well, the row is smaller than uh, current seat layout but length minus one and current column uh, is bigger than zero yeah uh, bottom center uh, current it's only this and bottom right it's uh, this and um, I think this one here now um, when you reach yeah this, this is correct okay so let's get another spin we should not get out of bound errors anymore uh, we do get an answer but it's the wrong one obviously um, because this time around it should be 37 but for the second part it's 26 so let's see what um, let's debug uh, let's add a breakpoint here and see what these uh, adjacent seats are for the first uh, run What are they? Undefined. So top left is undefined. Top center, top right. That's correct. And then the left one is undefined. The right one is empty. Top left is undefined. And bottom center, bottom right are both empty. That's correct. Uh, this one is empty and these ones are empty. Uh, that looks good. So then if seat, current seat is, uh, you know what I can do as an optimization? Uh, I can just say here at the top, if seat is a dot, we don't need to do any of that at all because we leave dots untouched. So then we save ourselves doing all this computation stuff for um, for for uh, empty grids. So then, uh, so then, yeah, we're here. If seat is uh, L and number of occupied adjacent seats is zero, then change the layout and return a different yeah that sounds right and if seat is occupied and there's more let me see let me read the new rule again also people seem to be more tolerant than you expected it now takes five or more visible occupied seats for an occupied seat to become empty five or more five or more yeah uh, bigger or equal than five we empty the seat the other rules still apply empty seats that see no occupied seats become occupied and seats matching no rule don't change that's here and floor never changes yeah so that's floor uh, floor never changes here at the top if it's floor, uh, actually this shouldn't be C, but position or whatever. Uh, position is floor, then return position. Good, okay. That looks good. So our adjacent seats, uh, let's add these two breakpoints as well. Oh wait, let me change. Let me add a breakpoint in here and in here. In here and uh, I want to have a breakpoint as well for each iteration so let me run the debugger let me remove this breakpoint for now let's 
So now we're on our second iteration. Yep, all seats are filled. Let's uh, do, 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 add some breakpoints in here. Okay, so now we reached. Uh, so what are adjacent seats now? They're all occupied. But it's three of them that are occupied. Three of them are occupied, which means the current seat doesn't change. Yeah, only at five or more, then the seat becomes empty. So it doesn't change. Next seat. Um, adjacent seat, we have four, and three is false. I guess I could return undefined here. Turn undefined uh, because all of the other seats are undefined as well, so that's kind of like in line. Uh, although it shouldn't matter though for our logic. So this one has four, it's unchanged, that's correct. This one has five empty seats, so therefore it does change. We are in here and we, we're about to return an empty seat, so that's correct. That logic is good. I wonder if our out of bounds on the right hand side are working as expected. So let's go. What's our current layout? It's this. Uh, what's our current index row? Zero, column five. So where are we in the, in the column? The layout five, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Let's go to um, 9. Let's see what's happening at 9. So then I need to keep track of, 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 of this one. Uh, the, no, the column index, yeah. Can I just watch this? Isn't there a shortcut to watch this variable? That's weird. I'll need to grab it from here. Closure, which closure are you in? Column here, this one. Add to watch. Okay, so I need to keep track of this variable. If it's at nine, here we are. Um, what do we get for, for that uh, seat? Adjacent seats. Undefined, undefined, three occupied. It sounds about right. Let's look at the layout. This one has three occupied, yeah, looks right. Okay, let's go to, I don't know, let's go to this seat over here. Yeah, let's go to this seat. So that's, uh, that's what, uh, row two, column zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Column five, row two. So let's add the row index to our watch list. And um, let's go to the third row. Now we're in the second row. This is our third row. Uh, 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 uh. I wanna watch the current seat layout. So we are on the third row. No, wait, one, two, three. Okay, so that's row three. Okay, we need to go one more row below. Okay, and then we said for the column, we were looking at which one? This one. So this one is zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's go to five. No, six. Ah, uh, I missed it by one. Six is fine. Okay, six is fine. So this one. How many occupied seats do we have? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Kind of like goes in all directions. Seven, eight. All of them, okay. Adjacent seats. Yeah, eight seats occupied. So that's good. Can we go to um, to the case where it reaches the end, the end of the map? Let's see if that's correct. Uh, uh, 
uh, which seeds reaches the end of the map in a direction mm, let me see this one does in two directions even okay second row a nine eight seventh column okay let's uh, start debugger and run it again okay second row column index wait let me not mistake that again oh wait i need to remove we are on the first iteration let me get rid of that yep and add them back in playing with the debugger is fun oh let me just uh, get rid of this bot yep we're two hours and seven minutes into the stream i feel i feel i'm close i feel i made a silly mistake here with the rules uh, 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 uh yeah go okay good so we're in the wait, oh, i keep forgetting what i'm looking for here row two column i said nine eight seven row two seven okay row two okay two four seven here we are so what's our adjacent seats look like now false oh that that's not right uh, that's not right at all so we might have found our bug let's see um, it goes top left so top left seat is false because why is false should be hashtag oh let's see adjacent seat top top left where are you here false why are you false current row index is four because row index is what why is row index four aren't we why are we going up we should go down row index two minus one should be one and then here we subtract by one, no? Curl index. Am I, is this stuff messing with me uh, with the variable? Because I'm reusing it here. Oh wait, maybe we're Oh yeah, because we, we went through all of those already. Okay. Um, so, okay, we can't debug that value, but top left was okay. Um, this does, yeah, we cannot look at these values because I've overwritten them in subsequent while. So this is gonna, the row index and column index is, is only valid for like the last run of this, uh, this seed, so. Unfortunately, um, let's see if the logic is right. Uh, we subtract the row in the column by one. And so there we get a uh, row is one, column is six. Uh, so then we pass that in here with the current seat layout and get adjacent seat returns. It grabs that that position and if it's equal to a dot oh this is this is wrong if it's equal to a dot it's gonna return yeah this this is completely wrong uh if it's equal to a dot then return undefined otherwise return the seed yeah that's what i want It's equal to a dot return undefined otherwise return so this should be undefined now let's uh let's check it row two okay let's do another run of the debugger do, do, do. 
let's go to row 2 row index 2 and column 7 All right so back to our JSON seats so instead of undefined it gives us an L which is really strange wait oh because we're on the first iteration okay Oh, I need to go through all it. We're still on the first state of the map, so we haven't changed all the rows to all the seats to occupy. Okay, this is the state we're looking for. So row index two, column index seven. Great. Okay. So this is uh, occupied seat. Let me grab the current seat layout here. Yeah. Occupied seat. So we're looking at row index two, seven, this one. Occupied seat. That's good. This one should be undefined. That's correct. This one should be occupied. This one should be occupied. This one is undefined. That's correct. And then we have occupied in every direction at the bottom. Yeah. That's working well. Um, let's go. Yeah, still, still, we still haven't fixed our bug. Oh, so frustrating. I want to get this done. Um, hmm. Let's see. Uh, I want to print out. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to print out the state because we have. For the second part, we have kind of a few snapshots of how the state should look like. So our second state is good. Uh, our third state should look like this. Let's go uh, uh, ahead and print that. So this is our first state, second state, third state. It looks like this. It would be nice if I could somehow copy value. Can I just do this and then paste it in here? Oh, this looks nice. Can I format it somehow? Uh, yeah. Ah, I can I can use this. Too much of a pain. Okay, so this is our third state. Something's wrong. I, I see already. Uh, first row has occupied seats on the edges, but all of them, all, all the others are empty. Which is now what we're doing here. We this sheet, this seat, and this seat should have been emptied, and this one as well. Yeah. So uh, uh, uh. our logic for this seat is On our previous iteration, we were here, all seats were occupied. And then the seat, if the seat had five or more, it should be empty. So one, two, three, four, five. Should be emptied. Uh, but we did not. We did not. Our, is it because we're not copying the array correctly? I think we got rid of that bug from the previous in the first part. Hmm. No, I think that's good. Uh, might be something wrong with the logic. Uh, so let's go to our first second third iteration let's go into our third iteration this seat and see what uh, what we get not this seat because that's our bug there yeah the seat should be empty so row index zero column zero one two okay I'm gonna do that let's run the debugger so now we're on our first iteration if I'm not mistaken second one yeah 
we're in a second iteration that's where we need to start and let's add a breakpoint for each code branch and we're looking for column index 2 here we are so what are the adjacent seeds of that here so we're looking at this seed right now in this state uh, top left the entire top area is undefined so that's good the left seed is undefined which is not true we do have a left seed so that's where our bug is because we get we're just under the five seats we get four seats these seats are not is this seat is not emptied well it should be emptied if we add these seats uh, if we fix the bug for the seat okay so that might be our bug a bug maybe there's more but i at least found one that's good because i was spent like the, the past 15 minutes trying to reproduce this bug awesome uh we're uh, we have something to work with now uh, uh um so the the logic for getting our left seat here adjacent seat left is bugged let's see uh column minus one current column index as long as column index is bigger than or equal that's where it's our, our bug is and i guess uh for the others as well yep no current row current column yeah current row should also be bigger than equal okay there we go we need to add bigger or equal than uh, for all the zeros that we have in here okay yeah that's those are all of them let's run our program again we get 33 so we get a number that's less that's good we're moving in the right direction the correct number is the 26 though so we're missing some other edge cases mm, let me see what current row index is bigger than or equal to zero column as well and then here we're going top center so we're going up that's good here we're going to the top right so row goes down the column increment increments so the row decrements the column uh, I think this is good column increments row decrements okay we go to the left, column incre uh, decrements. We go to the right, column increments. That's good here. Row length minus one. Oh wait, or equal. Or equal, or I can just say, okay, here's our second bug. So everywhere we have row length, we remove the minus one. Otherwise we could just say smaller or equal than but I prefer to remove it um, and then also for the currency layout yeah uh, currency layout length here's our bug that's why I don't like imperative loops like this that much because it's so easy to make off by one mistakes Okay, run it again. 26, we have the right number. Okay, let's give it a try with our input and see if the, I hope the program doesn't hang. It doesn't. We get a different number and I have a good feeling about this. We did it. I'm so glad about today. I'm, oh, this is awesome. We have 22 stars. Uh, we're almost halfway to collecting our 50 gold stars. And we finished day 11. This is really good news. We did it in two hours, 20 minutes, 10 minutes. Oh, that's not so bad. Not so bad. So uh, it looks like ASCII art is uh, gonna be on a ferry next day uh, on day 12. It's gonna be on a ferry to our destination. So I think our tropical island, this starts to look like our tropical 
destination or island and then perhaps you're gonna have to travel on the island as well to reach the resort uh, that's fun really cool um, let me uh, before I close off the stream I'm gonna add uh, commit the solution and uh, push it to the repository so that you folks can have a look uh, to what we came up with here today in case you're interested I'm not I might optimize this a bit later if I have time I'm re not really glad with uh, I'm not really happy with the all the while loops we have in here I could perhaps extract this to a function and significantly shorter short how long this area is but uh, yeah I might do that later on so git status git commit day 11 soft yay Git push origin main. So our code should be visible right here now. Awesome. I'm gonna link uh, to the repository in the chat. There. So that's uh, that's it, folks, for today. Uh, we solved day 11. Really happy about that. Um, since it's Friday, uh, I'm not streaming the weekend, so. There won't be a stream tomorrow or on Sunday. Our next stream is going to be on Monday, uh, next week on Monday, same time, 10 a.m. Uh, Central European time. And I'm going to start the day with recapping the uh, solutions for the weekend. Uh, so I'll be doing the solutions for the weekend off stream. And I'm going to go through them on Monday uh, before we continue with uh, what is going to be day 14 on Monday. Uh, yeah, thank you for sticking around today and keeping me company. Appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day and a nice weekend. And I hope to see you next week on Monday. See ya. Bye bye.